During World War II, people like my mother were encouraged to smoke to calm their nerves. What an irony that she should survive the bombs and even the fags, only to have her life stubbed out in her old age, because she, like millions of other men, women and children, have become the human fag ends of international capitalism. I'm not a politician, I'm just a mother condemned to live in poverty for the past 13 years. And I don't know about you, but I'm determined that my three children are not going to end up in their human and environmental ashtrays. That's why I want to tell you my personal testimony of what I can only describe as a war without bullets. A war that is not only killing more people than tanks and bombs, but is also destroying the lungs of the earth in the process and right under was very noticed. This is where I live, in a freezing cold damp flat on the edge of Glasgow, a place built after the Second World War and seen as homes fit for the working class heroes. I used to think that the only real threat to my children's lives was a nuclear war, until I brought my babies who were bouncing with health home from hospital and my life became a constant battle for survival between my family and the fungus family. The insanity of my reality made me feel so stupid and powerless and I became really depressed. I asked my doctor for a prescription for a warm dry home but he offered me antidepressants. I refused his kind of medicine and I joined my community's fight for justice instead. It was then that I started to witness human suffering and hardship on a scale which I never thought I would ever see in my lifetime except perhaps in times of war. So I want to announce World War III. People were walking all over the battlefield, the casualties everywhere to be seen, our children damaged before they even get a chance to live, the old dying before their time. The unemployed who have been used like the food mountains to keep down the price of labour, and the teenagers who have been left with no sense of identity and are having to sleep up closes are in the streets beside the rubbish. All I had in my side was common sense, my mother's faith in justice and the spirit of a community that refused to die. We started to make allies with middle class professional people who shared our vision of a better world and our 10 year fight resulted in this. The first ever tenant led energy conservation project now we can heat our houses instead of heating the sky above. Once we started to make the links between our sick houses, our sick children and the sickness of the planet, we became involved in the international struggle for justice. I was sponsored to go on a health study tour of Nicaragua and their stories of social destruction were the same as mine. I witnessed women and children dying because the healthcare system, which they once regarded as a basic human right, had been privatised. In one hospital, I witnessed a new baby struggling for life next to a brand new incubator because the hospital couldn't afford to buy oxygen. Since then, our community in Easterhouse has been building links to communities all over the world. And our community has become like a mini United Nations. Women come in here so that we can share our experience and exchange our stories. I was invited to, to the United Nations Commission on Sustainable Development to talk about our struggle for justice and to also demonstrate the success of our solar housing project, evidence that when people at the grassroots actually get listened to, then the benefits can go far beyond our own social and economic environment. It's not that I've become over environmentally friendly, rather it's because I'm sitting here with my lights cut off, as if to remind me that the only thing that remains sustainable in this planet at the present time 
is poverty. Sometimes it's frightening to take on the big picture, but when you realise we're not alone in our struggle. When I was at the Commission, I met all these people from communities like yours all over the world who were all fighting the same issue. And I was really inspired and reminded of the power of the human spirit.